Hello, my name is Triadar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a set of modular cisterns and catacombs in Minecraft. Let's get started. So first let's take a look at the series of catacombs and cisterns. This model here I have sliced the top off of so we can see it in profile. We'll take a look at a complete one in a moment over there. And then we will take a look at all the various phases and modules that you can mix and match to create what you see here. Because all, all of these little sections here are modular, meaning that you can uh, mix and match and put together your own distinct layout of catacombs. You can also increase and decrease some of the dimensions of the rooms if you want to. You can perhaps uh, double this room or double this room over here as well. But first, let's take a look at the most obvious feature here, which is, of course, the water. So if we get in a boat, we can paddle down the stream here underground. This can be designed to be used as a sewer system if you want to as well beneath your city. You have a nice generous lake area here with uh, columns that will be holding up a roof and everything. Just like the ancient Romans would build in their cistern. A lot of examples of these in Constantinople. And if you want to get around in a boat inside your sewer system or your catacombs, you can just uh, boat around from uh, just whatever layout you want to design for them. We have little areas here also where you can disembark as well. But if you don't want to have anything to do with the boat, you can of course leave out the water and just replace all of that with cobblestone. And you can have nice little pathways to walk down instead. If you want to have both, we do have pathways on the sides here also. But if we go in here, we do have an example of a catacomb burial chamber in here. So here, this would be where your double chest would be for your coffins or perhaps for your burial urns instead. Uh, because uh, the Romans didn't exactly go in for inhumation. They would do uh, cremations and have little urns that they would have with ashes. But later on, especially in the Christian period, uh, they switched over to inhumation, which means that they needed uh, big uh, body-shaped cavities in the stone to bury people in. And uh, that was the beginning of the catacombs. So we have a larger example of a burial chamber over here as well. Uh, so many bodies in here. This would be something that you would have for, I think, perhaps a public burial chamber. But for a small family burial chamber, you could have something along this sides here. And as I said, if you want to, you can extend these rooms because they are all modular. You can extend them uh, out that way, or you can make them into this uh, cross-shaped here as well. Another one over here. Uh, there are also little rooms we can also have that don't have anything in them. Say you want to have a large central space with just a one coffin in the middle of it here. You can, of course, have that as well. Uh, and there are a couple of sizes of cisterns if you want to have these to choose from. As I said, if you don't want the water, you don't have to put that in there. You can just use these as large multi-purpose rooms. We have various rooms at the end here uh, done up like that as well. And let's go over here and take a tour of the full version with the roof on it. Uh, so I can show you all of the nice features we have inside the catacombs. So it's going to get a little dark in here for a moment. We'll have a potion in a moment, but I want to give you the the uh, atmosphere of the place. It's going to be down to however many torches you want to put down. Uh, but it is fairly atmospheric if you want to have, say, a spooky crypt or a catacomb system underneath your city. You can use this to construct one of those. Uh, but there is other things to see, so let's have a potion here. Shed a little light on it, and we can see that the ceiling in here is, of course, done out of uh, arches and rib vaults. Quite a number of these, all formed out of uh, diorite and cobble, as you see here, to hold the roof up. So the whole thing doesn't collapse. Some good old-fashioned Roman engineering, as I said. Uh, there are examples of these still today, holding water in Constantinople. If we go through the passages, though, and follow the water, we can go we can go down this way here to one of these little chambers I showed you. It has a little pool here for you to get in and out of your boats. 
if you want to travel through the system here in boats. Uh, but if you don't want that, then you don't have to. Over here, we have a large chamber that I already showed you for the burials. And they have arches on the sides here for just little barrel vaults on the sides. Now, some of them are going to be more ornate than others. We have just the, the very simple one here with just uh, a couple of Roman arches on the top there as well. And if we go back down here, turn this way, we go into a smaller cistern, but then it ends over here in a larger uh, end chamber over here. But as you can see, they've all got the same ceiling design on these with the arches and the rib vaults and everything. So um, now I think it's probably a good idea for me to go ahead and begin the tutorial now that we've got the tour out of the way and show you uh, these various different modules that you can use to piece together. And uh, let me do a large overview of that before we start on it. So the first thing I'll be showing you over here is going to be the little segment that makes up the corridors. So if we put corridors together down here, if we take one corridor segment like this here, and we build another identical copy of it, in fact, uh, two more copies, we can then make this large hallway here as well. They're all designed to fit together, like you see done here, and like you saw back, back over here. The, the main axis of this is, of course, made up of corridor segments. And off the corridors, we will have some, uh, some T intersections, and we can also have some cross intersections as well that you can use to lay out uh, just any any design of catacomb or sewer system that you want to put underneath your base or your city or whatever. I have uh, this model over here cut in half that we just looked at. Uh, most all of these are going to be symmetrical, by the way. So if we take this over here and slice it in half, uh, what you build over here is going to be the exact same, just a mirror image of what we built over there. I think you can clearly see that here. So uh, let's take a look at the first uh, module here for uh, this. Now, I don't have any materials list for this like I usually do with the numbers and everything because almost everything here is going to be uh, stone bricks, cobble, diorite, um, what, uh, upside down cobblestone and stone brick stairs. And that's, that's essentially it. So you will need uh, gobs and oodles of those of various materials because, as I said, I can't give you exact numbers for these because your layout that you build is going to be different from the reference models that have shown you here. So uh, every one's will be different from all the other ones too. So I can't even begin to give you numbers on that. Uh, but I can give you some measurements. So the uh, the basic section is going to be nine blocks wide for a section and across it is going to be what one two three four eleven so it's going to be nine by eleven for each one of these sections here and uh, you can ignore all the cobblestone i have underneath here this was i had to pad that out because the the cisterns over there go down deeper than the hallways do, or the passages. So on top of that, you then want to, you can either put in the water, water channel here, or as I said, if you do not have any need for the water channels, just fill in this here in the middle with cobblestone or whatever, so you can just walk straight down it instead. Uh, but on top of that, once you have uh, carved out, that section there, probably underground, you're going to need to mine out quite a lot of materials for this, and you'll get most of the materials that you need to build this from your mining, most likely. Uh, so over here, we just have a very simple pattern of diorite and stone bricks right there. And two blocks farther up, we are alternating a layer of cobble and then a layer of stone bricks. And uh, you may need to place many more torches down than the ones I have outlined here, if you're doing this in survival especially. So you want to extend all those up for another two blocks, alternating your cobble and your stone bricks again, like so. 
two blocks farther up, we have a string course here of upside down cobblestone stairs, upon which uh, you can also use this to put some additional torches up here to help uh, hide just a little bit of lighting and light things up. Like so, we have a bit more diorite here because we're going to be building some arches. Uh, if memory serves, the arches are going to be, uh, what? Like this here. That's going to be uh, the standard arch. Right there, like that, all made out of diorite. Of course, it's, it's the same on both sides. By the way, remember I said this is symmetrical. So next phase over here, we then want to also add in our rib vaulting right here for that. And for this last phase here, you just put a sheet of cobblestone on the top here. Now I will break some of this dye right here so you can more clearly see the pattern for the rib vaulting. And all we're doing with that is we want to connect the four corners of the arches here together in the middle with some uh, diagonal arches. And uh, that's all a rib vault is, like you see done here. And uh, for the most part, uh, you just want to make a big X with the diorite, like you see done here, except we want to extend it down a little bit on the sides here so it can all get rounded out. All right, so that is going to be one hallway segment. So as I said, you will be building, no doubt, a lot of these hallway segments. So once you do, once you know how to build one of these, you then want to just mine out and build another one, and then mine out and, and build another one, and for however many you need. Now, at various intervals along here, you can choose to add in a doorway, like, like that there, probably, like so, just uh, marked out with the red there. And on the other side of that doorway, you can choose to add, uh, where, where is an example of that? Uh, here we go. And you can choose to add a room on the other side of that doorway, like you see done here. So uh, this, uh, this segment here, this is just a hallway segment, like I said. But on the other side of this, you can have a doorway, which leads to a small chamber. And of course, in here you can uh, you can either extend this chamber back or off to the sides using the same modular pattern. Uh, and you can also fill it with also uh, being a uh, a little catacomb chamber, like we have over here as well. Um, but before we get to that, let's double back on the uh, corridors for a moment because I want to show you the T intersection here, like you see. And uh, these are very simple. All you do is, you once you build one segment coming through here, you then want to modify it into this, uh, this back here. No, not, not that there, this right here. I've sliced that one in half. There is also an example right here of a cross intersection. Like you see, it goes off in four directions. And all that is, that's just a double T intersection. But to build one of those, what you build over here, you just copy that and mirror it on the other side if you want to have one of those. So let's take a look at the phases for this. So as you can see here, we just have a standard uh, corridor segment. Over here, same deal. You can. This was a doorway. You can ignore that. That should be stone bricks. Right there for that. But on the other side of the corridor, for whichever segment, you then want to start building this pattern here, which is going to be just a, a little bit different, because all we're doing is we're taking a corridor segment and we're rotating it 90 degrees and building another one right here. So let me give you a look at this over here. It's really only at the corners here we're going to have any difference between these. And uh, next phase, two more blocks up, same deal. And next phase over here, two more blocks up, same deal again. You can see we're wrapping the string course of the upside down cobblestone stairs, just uh, turning the corner and going in that direction there. And the next phase over here for the ceiling, for the rib vaulting for that, 
you are doing the exact same. There won't be any difference between the rib bolts like you see done here. They're all going to be the same. Like so. And I think it would be just be better if I show you the completed, the completed model right here. So as you can see, there's no difference in the ceiling. The only real difference is you're knocking out uh, you're, you're knocking out this entire wall here, pretty much, and replacing it with another archway. And then on this uh, on the side of this other archway here, you then just start building another corridor. I think all that's clear. Like uh, like uh, this this here, this corresponds to this here, right there. It's just going off in a 90 degree direction, like you see done here. I don't think that's very difficult to understand. So we will move on and uh, I'll show you the next phase over here. I, as I remarked, there is a cross intersection. As I said, you just uh, uh, continue and squish the corridors together on two sides instead of only one from the T intersection and you can have a cross intersection there. Uh, now, next phase over here, as I said, we're gonna take a look at this little room. We have off to the side here. So here's going to be the pattern for that room. Let me give you the, the measurements for this. And so from the back here, it's going to be one, two, three. I think that's going to be what? Eight, 11 by what? One, three. All right, so it's an, it's an 11 by 11 square. And you want to build this pattern here with the diorite and the stone bricks. Uh, whatever's back here, you're not gonna see this. It probably doesn't matter. Like that there. So if you're mining that out, you can leave uh, You can leave that as just plain stone or whatever you found back there. And the next level up, all you're doing is extending the walls up from that foundation. And like you see done here. Next phase, two more blocks up on the inside, the same deal. Except when we finish the doorway, we want to put a very simple lintel of upside down stone brick stairs on both sides, just for a little tiny bit of decoration. Right there. And next phase over here, we put on our string course of cobblestone stairs here, just like we have on this side. And you want to copy that inside the room on all the four walls like we have done here. All right, uh, next phase from that, uh, the, the ceiling in these is going to be exactly the same as we built out here for the corridor. You just want to build one in here as well. You can use the positions here of the diorite and the, the uh, cobblestone string courses that we built to help you cite that. And let me go ahead and show you the completed example in here. You can see we just have a standard rib vault that you should already know how to construct by now. So you just want to put one of these in this room. And as I said, if you want to expand this room, you can uh, you can knock that room out. Um, or rather, you can knock this wall out here, mine out some more. And from here to here is a module. So you can just build another copy of this wherever you need to, if you want to have a, a larger room back there than the standard smaller one. Uh, now, if you want to vary up the decoration with this as we get to the catacomb phase of the tutorial, here is what we just did over there, exact same on the outside. But on the inside, we have decorated the room a little bit differently. We have a barrel vault on the ceiling instead. And on the sides here, we have little niches for you to be able to place uh, chests and everything to use as um, uh, uh, niches in the wall or coffins or uh, uh, burial urns if you want to, perhaps some, some flower pots or something there for that. It will look pretty nice for a little burial urn. Uh, and as I said, um, I've used all the cheap materials to do this, the, the diorite and the cobblestone, the stone bricks and everything. But if you want to make a more spooky version, of this, you can start working in things like blackstone, uh, deep slate, uh, maybe some uh, cobwebs. 
here and there. Perhaps some of the blue torches from the nether. Just, you know, whatever you can think of to make it look extra spooky. Uh, back here, here is the design for this, though. The room is going to be the same shape. It's going to be another 11 by 11, except uh, every, every two blocks you want to leave the space here. For the niches on the sides. Right there. And then two blocks farther up from that. We just have these uh, cobblestone walls here as little attached plasters. Right there. Four of those on each side. To give just a little bit of uh, a classical decoration. Or very small columns on the insides. Right there. Next phase up, all you do is just, just repeat the last phase. Just stack it up. Like you see done there. And uh, next phase up from that, we then want to start building the lowermost portions of the barrel vault. And we're going to do that with the same arches that we built before. Remember that red arch uh, I built earlier? Um, uh, here, here's another one right here. And this is all you want to do in here. Just build four of these arches out of diorite like you see done there. And if I just go in over, over here, you can see just a little bit more of the arch there. We want to have the cobblestone start curving in behind that on the top for the ceiling. And if I go in this room here, you can you can see the completed example right here. Very simple to do. So I don't think you will have any trouble with uh, that. Uh, now, if you want to make a bigger version of that, like I previously showed you, let's go over here and take a look at this again. So you remember this here. And all this one is, is this is four of these little niches that we just built. Four of these uh, little small catacombs you can put together around a, a central corridor segment. You recognize the ceiling up here by now. So if you build a corridor segment here on, on um, four sides, you can then place a little catacomb chamber. And it can go off in all four directions here. And you can, of course, feel free to get creative with uh, how you want to construct things. Uh, so let me just show you uh, very quickly the, the top down for this here. So as you can see, it's a cross pattern. And it just has uh, four niches with a central space there. Going two blocks farther up here, you can see we're just doing the same patterns that we did for the small one but on the larger foundation here. Two blocks farther up, of course, same deal. And two blocks again here. You can see all the little pieces of diorite we're uh, building here to build our next set of arches. I'm going to go ahead and build another one of these here out of the, the red here. So you can see, so every place you have a little bit of diorite here, just build another one of those arches, like so. And then just build them as you build them up. Remember to curve in the cobblestone back here, like that. And then back in the completed model here. Name another potion so we can see. And you can uh, see that everything in here has been done with the same patterns that I have described to you before, except we are just combining them in a slightly different configuration. So, as I said, the entire set of buildings here is modules. So you can treat this as uh, one module or a set of modules, and you can construct these in any configuration you want. I would suggest doing quite a lot of planning to figure out exactly how you want your corridors and your chambers to be spaced out. If you remember back here at the original reference model, I've shown you uh, all of these sections and uh, in various configurations that we can use. Uh, but what's left to show you are going to be the cistern areas here. So at the end of the corridors, remember we had these little pools that we could come into and dock our boats in. So we're going to take a look at how to build one of those now. 
So back over here, uh, as you might suspect, this is going to be very simple because all all this is is uh, it's it's like that uh, little small room we took a look at before, except it's made up of four room modules instead. And it's got all the, the same spacing, by the way. All these walls throughout the entire structure, they're just going to be five blocks wide, then two blocks diagonal of diorite, and then five blocks again, then three, five, two, and five, and so on. All the way around there, of course, we do have a central uh, column here that we are going to be building to help hold up the room, like you see. So we have a standard corridor segment there. But on the end of that, if you want to have a, 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 a terminate in a larger room, you can begin building this here. So uh, all this is, should be familiar now. We just have the diorite in the corners. The walls are alternating stone bricks and cobblestone, like you see down there. Then extend all that up again for another two blocks. And then for yet another two blocks again here for the room. Right here. And then over here again, you want to extend that up yet again. And this is going to be for a total of what? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine there. And in the middle here, we of course have one of our Corinthian columns. If you're a veteran in my tutorials, you already know how to build these. It's going to be six blocks of diorite in the middle there. A two block base down here, cobblestone, stone bricks. And of course, our Corinthian capital here at the top, made out of upside down cobblestone and stone bricks there, double stacked on top of each other for our acanthus leaves. And then on top of that here at this level, we then want to now have a string course of upside down cobblestone stairs here at this level. And uh, let me show you this in relation to the corridor here, because the, the ceiling of this room is higher than a corridor. So we have our standard corridor. It ends right. Uh, it ends right here, right there. Let me give you a view from the other side. So the string course for this one begins at the very top of the arch right there, then you just want to extend that around the room and build in your central column there. And after you have done that, we then want to build four of our ceiling segments. So remember this, uh, this rib vault ceiling segment here that we've been building throughout the entire tutorial. You want to build four of those in here, exact same design, except they're all going to meet in the middle here and rest on this one, one column. Like so, right there. And as you can see around the room, we have, well, let me show you the last phase. Might be more illuminating. So let me just squeeze it in here. So you can see that here we have four arches from the, the middle columns here that attach to the top of this column here. And then also four of our ribs will be going diagonally to touch on that as well. It makes a nice, pleasing little shape, I think. Uh, but as I said, this is just this is essentially just four little room modules, but they're taller and uh, all squished together. And that's really all that is to create one of those. I want to uh, come back over here and show you a variant of that. If you want to have a larger room, instead of a 4x4, four four, you want a 9x9. Nine nine. Right here, you can, of course, extend your patterns. Have your pool terminate perhaps in the middle here, or you can put that on the side over there. If you want to, and extend up all your walls like so. And build then four columns in the middle around your water pool or your impluvium. Build out your Corinthian capitals here. The lowermost portions of all of the arches that you want to build. 
Then add in all of your ribs. And then finally, let's squeeze in here. And then finally, your ceiling will look like this. And of course, all your ceiling is, this is not any different from any of the other ceilings in here. As I said, if you built one, then you know how to build them all. You just cram nine modules together right here. Of course, the nine modules are sitting on four columns, whereas the previous build, uh, four modules were sitting on one column. All right, so if we keep going with that idea, we can turn that entire structure back there into a cistern by lowering the columns down and digging out and uh, placing a lot of water, like you see done here. So down below here, we, of course, have our columns. There's just going to be four blocks dug down from the uh, the standard height of the walkway. There's four blocks down here. Of course, all the columns in here, they're going to be spaced the same blocks apart that all of the other ones have been as well. Right there. And let me just uh, measure that for you. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven blocks apart. Therefore, that and the uh, the hallway, or rather the, the the walkway around the chamber is just going to be done according to this pattern here. It's the standard pattern that we used for the previous segments. We're just doing it on a larger scale. Let me just show you that from the top down. Perhaps it'd be more illuminating. Like so. Of course, we now have six columns, which means we're going to have a total of uh, what twelve. Uh, ceiling modules for the rib vaulting and everything. So I'll essentially skip that one and go on to this one over here. So you can see what we're doing with the walls here. We're just uh, extending the diorite straight up, alternating our cobblestone and our, and our stone bricks. And here we are building the lowermost portions of our Corinthian capitals. Right there. Next phase over here, we're beginning to build the die right here for our arches and everything for the string course for the upside down cobblestone stairs from, from the corridor module. You just wrap that around at the same level and extend it all the way along the wall. All right, next phase over here again. You can see what we're doing here. We are just beginning to build all of the rib vaults to hold up the structure. Let's uh, skip to the last phase. And you can see in here all these little rib vaults are exactly the same as the ones we have been building throughout the entire tutorial. You are now just building 12 of them sitting on six columns. These are just like the large rooms that we built for the last uh, two uh, modules that I showed you, except it's on a larger scale, but the columns are sunk down a little bit. So we can have this, uh, this cistern of water down here at the bottom. All right, so if we take that idea to its uh, ultimate conclusion over here, we can see that for the last section, for the largest section, if you want to have a really big cistern, you can indeed have one. You can have, uh, what is this going to be, 25 Rib vault modules sitting on 16 columns, I think, if I did that uh, math correctly. And it's, it's exactly the same pattern as what we did over there, except it's just uh, twice as big. Instead of six columns, we now have 16 columns, a little bit more than twice as big. Uh, so as you can see here, I'll just show you this from the top down, because all of the building is going to be the same. As I said, it's just more of the same, but bigger. So you should already know how to do those, building up your columns, your walls, then building up your rib vaults here, like you see. And if we lower down and take a look at the last phase here, you can see it is indeed the same rib vault design that we have used throughout the entire tutorial, uh, but it's now supporting a, a veritable forest of columns here. So I think that is going to wrap up the modular Roman catacomb and cistern tutorial.
And as I said, you can uh, mix and match these in any combination you need. Perhaps you only want a sewer system and you have no need of the catacombs. You can just build the modules over here for the water system as you need. Uh, but if you don't need the water system and you perhaps only want the catacombs, you can fill in the water channels here in the corridors and only build a section of catacombs for your city instead. Since this is a modular system, it's really quite versatile. You can, as I said, uh, configure this in any shape uh, that you feel like building and adding to your world. And if you already have a large Roman city and have just a run out of things to build above ground, well, now you have plenty of things to build below ground. So this concludes the Roman aqueduct and catacomb tutorial. Remember, of course, the world is available for download in the video description, so you can download the world and take a look at all these little modules for yourself if, if uh, anything in the tutorial was unclear. And I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.